Hello everyone and welcome to Soccer 60 Extra Time where we bring just one topic you're interested and then we discuss it from there. Join me today is Andy Johnston and also our producer Ian Johnston. So today we have a topic that I think hits both of you guys really personally um, that is training for toddlers. Right? And uh, over the past month we have actually introduced a new program called the Kickstart program where it's focused on the three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Now, just to bring things into perspective, um, question to both of you guys, uh, when should a parent introduce football training to the kids? Uh, football training in a structured format I think depends on the, uh, the, the kid in question themselves, like some, some children are more um, capable of, of taking lessons and instructions at a younger age, some need, need to wait a little bit longer. Uh, for me, um, for my son personally, he started kicking a ball around at the age of 11 months. Um, so it's, it's just kind of evolved from there as he could do a bit more and he showed more interest in it. Um, then he started to attend more structured sessions. I don't, don't put any exact timeline on when kids should start playing, but I always advocate the earlier the better. Mm -hmm. um, Ian, is there such a thing as too young? I don't know. I think kids are going to start kicking balls around as soon as they can walk. As soon as that, you know, it it just comes naturally to a, to those a lot of kids. So, I don't think it's too young to start encouraging, enjoying kicking a football around, and maybe in a slightly more structured environment. Uh, I think the issue comes when you start trying to put them in specific drills and exercises and trying to teach. You know, you should be passing like this at too young an age. So I think the the important thing is it keeps it fun. They're enjoying themselves and they're they're learning without really realizing it. Mm. Uh, Andy, just bringing back to what you've actually mentioned just now that you should start them as as young as possible. Um, is there actually an advantage to it? I didn't say you should start them as young as <laughs> possible. I just said you know if that's something that they're enjoying, then then get them involved as much as as much as they can. Um, I. I I, I just think it's about, like Ian said there, the enjoyment levels, uh, finding that sweet spot for your kid that they're really enjoying it, they're not feeling like they're being pushed. Um, should be short and sharp sessions, I think. Like when I first started kicking a ball around with my son, uh, it probably lasted like five, 10 minutes. And then, you know, if, they, if, they, if their interest wanes after that, then move on to something else. You shouldn't force them to, to carry on doing something. Right. Um, so as, uh, as We've done this before with the under sixes. We tried to bring in the younger age groups, like two, three year olds who are interested to play football, to join in with the under sixes. Um, <clears throat> there were some issues faced with that. Um, what were your observations like for, the, for, for those? I think uh, it's not something we've pushed, is bringing these kids in previously at, at two, three years old. It's questions we've always been asked by parents. Mm. You know, they, they're football fans themselves, they want to get their child into football. And we, we get Facebook messages, my son's just turned two, can he join your training sessions? And, and the, the issue with that is previously we, we always said kind of five years old upwards. And that was joining our under six session, which is an hour long session. So right away, as Andy was saying just now, an hour for these younger kids is a really long time for them to concentrate on any task. Mm. So to try and get them to jump straight in their first experience of a football training session being an hour long, that's already one pretty big hurdle to try and overcome. Mm. I think as well, you know, the under six training session, it, it focuses a lot on direct competition. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of 1v1s. Um, there's always 20 minutes at the end dedicated or 15, 20 minutes dedicated at the end towards playing a match, a small sided game. Um, for kids younger than five, that's just way too advanced for them. They mm -hmm. don't understand the, the concepts of winning and losing very well. Um, they, they're not gonna be able to, to battle against people. Uh, you know, they need time where the ball is at their feet. They're not under um, uh, you know, a, a, a dueling battle. Uh, they're just getting time to touch it with their feet and learn out for themselves how, the, how they best move around. Uh, when my son first started joining the those under six sessions, he was about two years old. Mm -hmm. He could cope with the first ten to fifteen minutes, where it's very individualized kind of training, and then he then he petered out from there, and that was fine. I just let him join ten fifteen minutes, but you know, for for the majority of those kids coming in, they're not going to be able to last longer than that. So those sessions just aren't really appropriate for those really young children. So when we talk about that, uh, 
we then came up with the idea or Andy and Ian both you guys came up with the idea of the kickstart sessions which focuses very much on the three to four year old age group now how has the kickstart sessions counted what we've just mentioned before um, well so first of all they're 30 minutes long um, and I wanted to do something that was very short and sharp uh, doesn't require the kids to be there for a long period of time um, and then the second thing I did was did away with any matches and any 1v1 situations I saw it from my son's own experience that when he was put in that 1v1 situation it was very pressurizing uh, if he didn't get the ball he didn't know how to react he didn't know how to First of all, he doesn't have the physical capabilities mm. of tackling a five or six year old to get the ball back. Second of all, he doesn't have the emotional um, uh, kind of experience to understand that it's okay for someone else to have the ball and it's up to him to go and get it back. Mm. So we did away with any of those 1v1 situations and focused purely on um, individual skills. Uh, lots of time spent with touching the ball with their feet, one ball to each kid. Um, and then the next thing I did was I, I came up with some fun topics, some right. topics that they relate to. So I take like uh, children's um, you know, cartoons, PJ Masks, uh, Avengers, Paw Patrol, whatever it is, and come up with games that focus a lot on that. So instead of them doing toe taps, for example, they're practicing Marshall from Paw Patrol climbing his ladder. And, and it, it's the same skill, but you give a little different name to it and all of a sudden they have more interest in it. So. I combined those sorts of things and, and did away with the more um, uh, technical aspects of it um, and, and the more competitive elements and, and just let them have fun for 30 minutes was the idea. Mm. One, one nice little addition to that is, is we release on the Saturday before the Sunday session what the games and, and topics are going to be for that session. So uh, we'll, we'll put out an email, say this week's going to be a Paw Patrol game. And uh, we've had a lot of feedback where parents say they then go and watch a few episodes of Paw Patrol the day before and just kind of brush up on their knowledge of that. So when they come into the session, the kid's excited about, oh, I watched this yesterday, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be Marshall today kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's worked well. That did slightly backfire on me <laughs> a couple of weeks ago because... Uh, um, like, say, like Ian said there, we like to do that so that the, the parents can give the, the kids a little bit of a heads up as to what they're going to do on that particular day. Uh, maybe they can explain the, the drill a little bit to them in advance so they know what they're going to do. And one of the drills I came up with a couple of weeks ago, I called it Paw Patroller on a Roll, which if you're a fan of the Paw Patrol, it's one of their catchphrases and uh, you know the kids know exactly um, what it's about, what it's going to be about straight mm. from the start. But one of the disclaimers I always put on that email that goes out to the parents is that, you know, this is a plan for the session, but things may change. You know, if, if, if we have um, kids that can't cope with, with one aspect of it, I may change it up. Or if, if something takes a bit longer to get through, we may miss out an element. And on that particular day, it actually rained in the morning. So we mm -hmm. ended up canceling the first session and, and combining the two sessions together. So I had 15, 15 kids, I think, all, all below the age of four. Um, which was kind of interesting and uh, so it meant that we couldn't do this poor patrol on a roll game because it just wouldn't have worked mm. and uh, we get to the end of the session I said right guys we're done for today and one kid puts his hand but coach we didn't do poor patrol on a roll I want to <laughs> play that game I want to play it now <laughs> like, okay yeah so so that is a little bit of a disadvantage to that mm. but you know generally speaking it allows them to prepare ahead of time uh, a little bit so it's worked well and I, and I think with the younger age group as well the importance of having a parent to be involved um, when they play uh, or when they train uh, that's that's quite key in, in this as well how have you managed to balance over over like involvement and then just leaving them at the side so I mean I was a, a great example of this because my, my son's probably a, maybe a bit too young to be joining this mm -hmm. right he's not yet three but uh, I wanted to bring him down and let him try it anyway and for the first few sessions I definitely needed to be involved. Um, so Andy would explain the drill, what they're going to do, and my son would understand it, but would be maybe a bit too shy or, or not quite confident enough to, to get involved himself. So he would need me maybe to hold his hand and go with him. Mm. So I think we encourage that. If the, if the kids need a bit of assistance to, for the parents to step in and help, guide them, explain in their own way what they have to do. Um, but we also encourage that as the kids get used to it and get a bit more independent, that the parents step back away. Because I know if, if I stay on the field next to my son, he's gonna come to me. Mm. Whereas if I leave him and step back, now he's, he's used to the, the system and what he needs to do. 
as long as I can, I'm, I'm there, but I'm, I'm step back and let him get on with it. I think that's important that the support is there, but it's not too overbearing. How has, uh, how has, in your opinion, Harry coped with the program for the last few weeks? Uh, he, he loves it. He did struggle for the first few sessions, and you know, like any kid at that age, there'll be some days where he's he's maybe not fully switched on, or he's not not fully there. Or he's he's not slept well the night before, and then okay. he's a bit sluggish. But um, I'd say it took him three or four sessions. And you see that with a few kids, three or four sessions to get the hang of what's required of him, what he should be doing, how he, you know, how he can interact with the other kids, uh, and now he's away. I, I, I could I could leave him there and, and go away. He wouldn't know that I was gone. Yeah. I, I would say as well that a lot of that, a lot of what Harry has experienced and the other children as well, has also come down to my experience as a coach. Mm. Um, because I started this session not really knowing what to expect. Uh, all I knew was that my son enjoyed football there must be other three or four year olds out there that also want to get involved in football but there's there's, there's not so many options for them mm-hmm. so i started it and i and i knew what uh my son was capable of uh so i kind of designed the sessions with him in mind and uh, and knew what he could do and therefore expect other children to be able to copy it and replicate it um reality is that you know some kids are not as capable as him some are more capable so we've got to find uh, a kind of a nice balance and over the course i think now this weekend is going to be the 11th week mm. 11th week over the course of the last 10 weeks I've, I've started to understand what does work and what doesn't work with these kids um so that helps a lot as well and mm. i've started to be able to design drills which i think that these kids can can go and do by themselves without the parental help um, but it's a very important element to be able to have the parents there and to encourage them to come into the pitch mm. if they need to provide their kids with assistance because that's something that we don't encourage when they get to under six level. Right. When they get to under six level, it's parents off the pitch, let your kid cope with it and, and the coach will handle them. Um, but at, at this time, yeah, we, we encourage the parents to be nearby so if there's anything that the kids don't understand, they can help explain it. Uh, once the kid understands, then we let them go. What I don't encourage is if a kid is um, trying to work out a drill or an exercise by himself, the parent then coming in and, and showing him or her how to do it. Mm-hmm. Like We want these kids to figure it out for themselves. Yep. As long as they understand my instructions, then I, I don't need the parent uh, parental help there. Then they, you know, they should let the kids kind of make their own mistakes. Looking at it in the long term as well, um, with the three and four year olds and then co-going into the under sixes, um, do you think that this program would definitely help in getting better parents, better footballing parents out in the future? Well, I don't know about the parents, um, you know, that's that's not our focus, the mm-hmm. focus is for the kids. Um, what, I, what I do think is that it would for sure create better footballers. Um, I think that this is kind of a, a bit of a never-ending scale because uh, it wasn't that long ago that we started the under six program. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, it would be an under eight style when we would start taking kids from sort of seven years old. Um, and then what we decided was by introducing the under six program, uh, it okay, you, you can't teach kids so much technically then, but you can teach them the basics of you are one team and you attack that goal and you defend this goal. And what that meant was by the time they got to under eight, they knew the principles of what they were trying to do. Now when they are seven and eight years old and they're a bit more physically capable, you can actually start teaching them specific techniques and skills um, because they'd already learned the basics under six. Now we're taking that one stage further and going to under four. Mm. Now by the time these kids progress on to under sixes, they are going to understand the fundamental principles of the game and we'll be able to start teaching them those those techniques and skills at an even younger age. So Mm. that's how I see it progressing and probably we're going to end up with an under... I don't know, under two session after this, like who knows where it'll go. But, you know, realistically, like, you know, kids from 18 months old can kick a football, mm. right? So so you can do stuff with them and who knows, maybe we do a, a 15, 20 minute under under two session in the future. Yeah. We'll see where it progresses. But with that being said, I, I, I like how you transition from that as well. Um, in terms of the future of the Kickstart program, what is in plans? I think uh, from my side now, um, what, what's kind of going to need to happen in the future is that we'll need to have a, uh, a distinction between the groups of kids that we do. Like right now we do two sessions, 8.30 to 9 and then 9.15 to 9.45. And it's kind of open to parents to pick whichever session they want to come to. Mm. Um, but within those groups, there's big disparities of ability. So you have to come up with drills which everyone can kind of do. 
Um, whereas there's some kids, perhaps in the the older stages of that, like they're getting towards um, the end of their four year four and going into turning five years old. Mm. Um, these guys can be pushed a little bit harder, but I can't really do that when I've also got young three-year-olds in the group. So we probably need to create a distinction between a, a, a beginner group and a more advanced group that will allow me to do a few more things. I think that we're just starting to touch upon, like last week I did a drill where it involved shooting and goalkeeping and, and they had that kind of element of going against one, in, one another in a very friendly um, format. I think we can progress those a little bit more for the for the more capable kids. Um, so we, we'll see how it progresses, but uh, realistically, I'm I'm just loving every single session that we do, and I just want to see more and more kids come down to it and uh, and grow the program bigger. One mm -hmm. thing that's quite nice to see is is I know your son will come to our sessions on a Sunday, but also comes to the under six session at University of Malaya on a Saturday. Mm. And I think there's a there's a couple other kids, some of the older ones, the slightly more uh, capable kids are, are doing a session on Saturday at the under six level and then coming to the kickstart program on a Sunday so that's also a nice transition into that program and that's something I think we're working on for the future is is how the kickstart program can not just be about having fun with football mm. it can also make sure like Andy was talking about that when they step up to that under six session they're fully prepared to jump straight in um, so that's something we're working on with almost like a little graduation system from Kickstart. Mm. So you, you, we've got a new stamp card now, so you collect your eight sessions and you get the t-shirt, the, the Kickstart jersey, and then maybe there's another eight sessions, you get your stamp and you're ready to go on kind of thing, you're ready to go on to the under six. So that's all the things we're working on to make it a bit more than just fun football on a Sunday, to make sure that there's also that our underlying principles as Little League Soccer is that we're about having fun, but also about learning. Mm. So that we're, we're making sure these kids, when they go on to the next level, they're as prepared as they can be. I think as well, one of the things, like Ian will laugh about this, but doing this, um, this program has actually made me read a lot about, <laughs> uh, about young kids and their development and their introduction into sport. And it's got me quite interested into um, writing a proper curriculum for this program so that they go through a, a, a training system. And so that ultimately as well, that it doesn't necessarily just have to be me coaching. We, we could have another pitch with, with another coach running this program and following the same sort of curriculum. But um, that's something that I'm looking into is making it more structured. So not just like fun football games, but they also get a chance to work on like improving their explosive strength, even at the age of three or four there's drills you can do to improve like uh quick running uh, footwork drills you can do it in fun ways and, mm. and, and make it exciting so that's things that i'm looking at at the moment as well and it's got me really down a bit of a rabbit hole of reading more <laughs> and more things about like young kids and, and their introduction to sport so that's fascinating for me and um you know it's something that obviously i have a passion into because mm. of my young son but just seeing these 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 other kids of the same age as him turn up every sunday and enjoy it as well it's it's fantastic that's great to hear and uh, we're looking forward to more on the kickstart program as well uh and that guys is the end of i just want to say one thing oh. before you or two things actually before we end that we, we i know we, we're trying to keep these episodes short but the two two things i'd like to point out one how nice it is to see a mix of boys and girls at mm -hmm. this age. Um, so we see uh, actually a few of our un younger age groups, the under six and the under eight, mm -hmm. that the boys and girls play really well together. Um, and there's a really good mix in the kickstart program of boys and girls. Mm -hmm. The other thing is what an amazing venue we have for it. So we're at Enfield at the club in Bukit Utama. Uh, and such a nice venue for parents to bring their young kids. It's a quiet place. There's a coffee shop nearby. So you, I know a lot of the parents go and grab a coffee after the session. And it's a really nice kind of intimate space we've got down there, a mm. nice kind of protective environment. So a really nice place for kids to come down on a Sunday morning and try out football. As my son describes it, he asked me, on Saturday morning we go to the under six training at UM Park, which he refers to as the big pitch. Okay. <laughs> on Sunday morning we do the training with the under fours at, at Enfield, and that's the small pitch. So he has this, this distinction already as to whether he's going to the big pitch to train or the small pitch to train. I think psychologically that's a big difference for the yeah. kids as well. That's great to hear. So if you're interested in to know more about the Kickstart program, you can always log on to www.littleleague.my to find out more about the program. And that's it for Soccer 60 Extra Time. And we will see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>